Good afternoon, everyone. It's day six of our quarantine story time. Today we're going to do Fancy Nancy, Aspiring Artist. Sunday. It's spring vacation, so I should be ecstatic, joyous, carefree. Those are all fancy words for happy, but I'm not. Brie and her family just left for New York City, the glamour capital of the world. My mom knows I'm a little glum, which is sad in a fancy way. So when she comes back from grocery shopping, she has treats. A big box of crayons for my sister and a set of glitter markers for me. What a splendid parent my mother is. While I'm doodling with my new markers, inspiration strikes. That means I get a great idea. I will turn my clubhouse into an art studio and I spend my vacation making gorgeous works of art. Doodles don't really count as art, but I get some of my most splendid ideas while doodling. Besides some supplies, that's fancy for markers, paints, and papers, all you need in an art studio is an artist. I'm wearing a smock and a beret. That's French for cap. Don't you think my beret makes me look more talented? My sister can only scribble. Even though scribbling doesn't count as real art, I tell her how beautiful her pictures are. In the afternoon, I have dance class. All over the studio are posters of ballerinas by a French artist named Edgar Degas. While I'm playing, suddenly inspiration strikes. I return to my art studio and draw beautiful ballerinas just like Edgar Degas did. Do you notice who all the ballerinas look like? <laughs> Monday. Today, I tell Mrs. Devine about my art studio. Her favorite artist is Claude Monet. She tells me he didn't like to work in a studio. He loved painting outdoors, even in winter. He'd wear three coats and a blanket to keep from freezing. Brr. Suddenly, inspiration strikes again. I would love to paint outdoors in your garden, just like Claude Monet. It was sunny when I painted this. I call it tulips in the wind. Then some clouds came and I had to use darker colors to paint the same flowers. I call this more tulips in the wind. Tuesday. I invite my friend Lionel over today. He can act like a real goofball, but he is, most, he is the most talented artist in our class. His faces are so good. Nobody does noses like Lionel. Not to brag, but I'm the second most talented. You can ask anybody. Here's a portrait Lionel drew of me. A portrait is a picture of someone's face. Hehe. <laughs> I don't really have a mustache or a goatee. That's fancy for a short beard. Then Lionel poses for me, but he keeps making crazy faces. Lionel is such a goofball. Here's a joke Lionel told me. What color is a burp? Burple. Wednesday. Ooh la la. A letter from Brie. I adore getting mail. Don't you? Look what she did on the back of the envelope. She wrote S-W-A-K. That means sealed with a kiss. Here is the front of the card that Brie sent. She went to a world famous museum where she saw this picture by Henry Matisse. He made it from pieces of colored paper that he cut out. Inspiration strikes once more. I get construction paper, glue, and scissors, and voila. I make a picture like Henry Matisse did. Even though wings on real butterflies always match, mine have two different wings. Artists are allowed to break rules. Thursday, even though I have been in the studio for hours, Everything I draw today stinks. My mom comes in to tell me that Lionel's grandma called. She's taking him to a 3D movie and he wants you to come. Alas, I can't go, I say. I'm waiting for inspiration to strike. Nancy, it's wonderful to be dedicated. That means working very, really hard, my mom tells me. But take a break. It will get your creative juices flowing again. My mother knows I listen better when she uses fancy words. Can you buy creative juice? No, it's a fancy phrase for imagination. My mom was right. After I get home, my creative juices start flowing. The movie was about really weird fish that live in the bottom of the ocean. Mine are imaginary. That means I made them up. Tiara fish, chandelier fish, tutu fish. Friday. 
For a special treat, my dad is taking us to the art museum. Lionel comes too. On the way over, he pretends to be carsick. My dad starts to pull over, but I explain that Lionel is just being a goofball. At the museum, there's a real painting by Claude Monet. I wish I knew a fancy word for how it makes me feel. All I can say is that the colors make my eyes happy and my heart happy too. Lionel says he likes this painting. At first, I think he's kidding. It's just a bunch of black drips and blobs, but the harder I look, the more interesting it is. Some parts look lacy. One part is almost like a spider web. My dad really likes it too. My dad tells us that he once saw a movie about the artist Jackson Pollock. He put the canvas on the floor and poured paint straight from the can. He also used paint sticks to make dribbles and all kinds of patterns. Imagination strikes again. I turn to Lionel. We can make a big painting like Jackson Pollock. We'll do it tomorrow and Bree is back. Saturday. At last, Bree and I are reunited. That's fancy for being together again. I tell her it's official. It's officially Jackson Pollock Day. Not really, but doesn't it sound important? My parents spread out a sheet in the backyard and find leftover cans of house paint. We wear old clothes, put on hip hop music for inspiration, and then, ooh la la, we fling and flick paint, we mix swirls and splatters, we drip and dribble. We are painting and dancing at the same time. Jackson Pollock was a very serious professional artist, but making a painting this way is silly and fun. Later, I show Brie all my art from this week. She shows me her sketches from New York City. My mom tells Lionel to stop sticking carrot sticks up his nose. Then she says, you have so much art, you can do an art show. What a splendid idea. We hang our artwork on the clothesline. We make a sign for the front yard announcing the exhibit. Exhibit is a fancy word for show. Come see the work of local artists. Free refreshment, Sunday, two to three. Sunday. Our art exhibit is a smashing success. That's a fancy way to say everyone has a good time and tell us how talented we are. I give Mrs. Devine one of the paintings I did in her garden. I tell her, I can't believe how tired my hands are from all the art I made this week. Mrs. Devine says that she knows the perfect remedy for aching artist hands, a manicure. The end.